I'm now joined in the studio by Steve from Sol Digital, who is going to talk us through the progression of lighting ballast technology. Hi, Steve. Hi there. Now, uh, we've got three ballasts in front of us, um, all from different manufacturers and all with different price points. Um, should we start by talking about the, the lowest price one on the end there? I mean, would you say this is where ballast technology started? Uh, these are the original uh, magnetic ballasts that were industry standard for a long time until obviously the, the digitals came along, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference between these two? I mean, what, I mean, obviously there's digital and magnetic, but in terms of function, what, what changed? Uh, magnetics are uh, copper or aluminium coils uh, with capacitors uh, and igniters. That's the three main components. Obviously electronics uh, rely on chips and uh, are far more efficient because of that. Um, so as I understand it, with the magnetic ballast, the, the coils that are inside them can actually cause it to become hotter. Um, are there any other disadvantages with using a magnetic ballast? Uh, well, yes, certainly they, they do become hotter over time. Uh, obviously, um, being steel and, and coil, they're heavier for a start. Um, the heat is obviously not a good thing for a grow room environment. Uh, excess heat um, is something that you know, we want to try and reduce as much as possible. Uh, the other disadvantage of magnetic ballasts is, is they do become noisy over time. Uh, they have plates that are, are laminated together. Uh, the, the glue that they use to laminate them together in time will degrade, which means the plates will vibrate. Uh, and if you've got a lot of those in a grow room, then that's quite substantial noise, which um, you know, is not, uh, not very advantageous. So we also touched upon efficiency here of performance. Um, can you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I'd say efficiency uh, is probably twofold. So initially, uh, the ignition of the lamp. Um, magnetics take approximately 20 minutes to bring a lamp to full brightness. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily uh, ignite the gas in, in the lamp all the way to the end. Um, the other efficiency is um, in relation to the deliver, delivery of um, current to the lamp. So um, a magnetic transmits the current that is delivered to it to the lamp, which can, if the current is fluctuating, mean you get flicker in the lamp. Uh, this doesn't happen with, uh, with an, uh, an electronic ballast. Okay, so in the middle here we have a, a silver digital ballast. Would you say that this is one of the first generations of digital ballasts after the magnetic one? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, a digital ballast that superseded uh, the magnetics. Again, if we're talking about efficiency, um, able to strike the lamps and bring them up to full speed within three to five minutes as opposed to the 20 minutes of magnetic ballast. Quite a difference, take, so yeah. quite a saving there. And with this ballast, we obviously have more efficiency, um, better lumen output, um, and quieter, I imagine. Are there any other differences with the magnetic ballast? Digital ballast, obviously, cooler running. Um, so uh, you'll see the design of the case here uh, dis is designed to dissipate heat. So with this digital ballast, we've, we've got a few differences with the magnetic ballast. I mean, it'll run quieter, and obviously, it'll, it'll work more efficiently. Um, are there any other differences? Uh, obviously, as you can see by the size of the units, we've got uh, a smaller compactor unit. They weigh less, so easier to position within your grow room. So we're looking at uh, about a 30% uh, improvement in, in efficiency with, with ballasts that are around today over a magnetic ballast. Um, we have things such as um, uh, a restrike built into them, so uh, if there's a power failure and a lamp goes out, then uh, they will re-strike intelligently. So uh, as opposed to our, our normal light switch, which we can switch on and off without any problem, uh, if you try and do that to a high intensity discharge lamp, you're, you're gonna damage the lamp. So these kind of ballasts have features built in which will pause for 60 seconds to, and will not attempt to ignite the lamp until it's at a correct temperature that's not gonna damage the lamp. So with the first magnetic ballast that we spoke about, um, we talked about flicker. Um, is that kind of eradicated with, with this new digital ballast? Yes, in, indeed. They'll, they'll regulate the flow of electricity, so um, the, they run the, the bulb at a constant lumen output uh, as opposed to a magnetic ballast. And that obviously passes on advantages to, to your lamps in your grow room, um, and in turn will make them more efficient. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, and what other advancements have we seen in this next generation of digital ballast? Uh, well, not particularly this ballast, but some of the uh, original digital ballasts had cooling fans in them, uh, which were cheap and liable to break, uh, and also noisy. Mm -hmm. um, RF was also a problem, so um, RF interference with TVs and radios, uh, that's something that's also been cut dramatically with, uh, with recent advancements in, uh, in ballasts. 
Um, am I right in thinking that with magnetic ballasts they create a spike in electricity when you first turn them on um, and have these new digital ballasts overcome that? Uh, yeah, that's correct. I mean, when you first flip the switch with a, with a magnetic, it, you're delivering sort of six amp spike, um, whereas the, the new digital ballasts have uh, soft start technology built into them. So you switch the power on um, and the current is delivered after three seconds and then every couple of seconds after that, up to three to five minutes when it, you know the lamp is burning at full brightness. So you're less chance of actually damaging the lamp by switching the and thing the on? the unit itself, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this digital ballast in front of us is a, is a 600 watt, so I couldn't use like a 1000 watt bulb with that, could I? Uh, no, you can't, but uh, again, another advancement is, um, is there are ballasts now that you can change the percentage uh, of the lamp output and indeed put different lamps in, and, and we've brought some of those to, uh, to demo today. Fantastic, well, let's go take a look. Sure. Okay, so we've got two different types of adjustable ballast here. Um, what can you tell me about them? Uh, we've got uh, a 600, 400, 250 adjustable and a 1,000, 600 and 400 adjustable, both with, uh, with an overdrive feature. So what are the main benefits of having a, a digital ballast that can adjust to these different wattages? Uh, well, typically people will start lights under fluorescent light, which is um, you know, lower intensity, uh, and then move to a metal halide and then up to a, a, a larger flowering lamp. So typically someone might use a 400 watt metal halide, dim down to 250 for the plants when they come from the fluorescent phase. Uh, they then step that up to 400. Um, and then maybe change to uh, high pressure sodium at 600. And then as we get on to the uh, flowering stage, uh, we've got the overdrive feature, which again uh, provides more lumens to your garden. Okay, uh, well let's do a demonstration in the studio and show the difference in light intensities. Yeah, sure, we can uh, use a light meter to uh, show the different intensities uh, from the lamps. Fantastic. Okay, so in the interest uh, of this demonstration, we're going to be using the 600 watt digital ballast. And we want to show the difference in lumens between the 250 watt setting and the 400 watt setting. Um, so we're at 250 now. Um, should we do a, a reading of the lumens? Yeah, sure. From the light meter, we can see we're at about 30,000 lumens, which is uh, correct for a 250 watt lamp. And if you care to turn up to 400, you'll see the lumens gradually increase up to about 50,000. Uh, which we'd expect for a 400 watt. And it's going to take a, a couple of minutes to get up there. Okay, so from that demonstration, we can quite clearly see an increase in lumens between the 250 setting and the 400 watt setting. Um, with other digital ballasts that I've seen, they work on a percentage. Um, why is this one different? Uh, the adjuster watt enables uh, the end user to use lamp sizes that are very familiar to them. So uh, 250, 400, 600, the, the lamp sizes that the, the grower is used to. Um, so rather than being a percentage of 600 or a percentage of 400, it's something that the, the customer can um, identify with. Okay, so the lights have been on for roughly 15 minutes now. Um, it's probably a good time to demonstrate the restrike feature. Yes, if you'd like to uh, turn the ballast off uh, and then we try to switch the ballast back on again, um, we'll see there'll be a pause uh, because the ballast is detecting that the lamp has just been on. Uh, and it will try to ignite the lamp every minute until it reaches the point where it's acceptable to, uh, to ignite the lamp. Uh, and this prevents damage both to the ballast and to the lamp. Okay, well I'll switch these off now. Okay, and if you'd like to try and switch them back on again, we'll see that it's not restruck the lamp. Mm. So the unit has detected uh, that the lamp is too hot, um, so it will wait at least 60 seconds until it tries to re-strike again uh, and of course it will uh, strike them in sequence um, as per the ignition uh, control. Okay. 